Hi, I'm Jason Glass, the director of the Iowa Department of Education, and I'm pleased to join you for the ninth episode of Ask the Gov. And of course, I'm not Governor Branstad, but I'm pleased to uh, step in for him today and talk a little bit about education and answer some questions. So let's begin. Uh, our first question comes from Daniel via Facebook, and Daniel asks, uh, people have been talking about rewarding good teachers uh, who teach well since the 1980s, but it hasn't seemed to have gained a foothold. How do we change that and stop the decline of American public education? Uh, well, I'd actually like to take the last part of that question first about the decline of American public education because I'm not sure that that's exactly right because our schools in f uh, today are really better than they have been at any time in the past. Uh, and the schools in Iowa are quite good. Uh, the issue is that other states and other countries around the world have improved their systems faster than we have. So while our school systems are good and better than they have been in the past, other school systems have improved more quickly and accelerated past us. So that's the real issue. It's not that our schools are in decline. The question that I think we have to face in Iowa is, are we willing to do what it takes to make our schools great? So our schools are good. I think most people would agree that. But are they great? And are we willing to do the things that it takes to make them great? So I think that's a question we have before us as a state. On to the other part of your question about rewarding uh, good teachers. Uh, you're right. Uh, we uh, treat teachers like interchangeable widgets and pay them all the same on sort of a very mechanistic lockstep uh, uh, pay structure. And we should be thinking about how we reward good teaching in, in different ways. But I think we have to be cautious and not run toward pure performance pay um, uh, compensation systems that frankly have a very poor track record of success uh, in really doing anything to raise student achievement. So we have to be careful not to run toward performance pay systems, pure performance pay systems. And at the same time, I think we have to be cautious not to just stand in defense of the status quo the same way we've been doing things. What I think a reasonable approach is, is to think about how we could more strategically use the cash, the funds that we have, that we put into salaries uh, in, in thoughtful, strategic ways that actually line up with what schools are trying to accomplish. So I think there's a, there's a middle ground between the, uh, the status quo model and a pure uh, cash for test scores or pure performance pay system uh, that we should find and think about how we use our money strategically. Our second question comes from Susie via Facebook and Susie asks, why is there a need for a state funded preschool? Wouldn't the money be better spent giving parents and daycare providers the tools they need to send successful well prepared children to kindergarten? Uh, this is a great question. Um, uh, the, the need for uh, a quality early childhood education system really is, is driven by um, uh, trying to uh, stop achievement gaps before they happen and give kids the tools they need to be successful in school so that they can be successful in the workforce. Uh, there's a lot of evidence that, that suggests that having a high quality early childhood um, education system is some of the most efficient education dollars you can spend uh, and can drive toward uh, positive uh, economic results for an economy uh, once those kids matriculate through uh, into the workforce. So that's sort of the reason why you'd want a good, uh, a high quality early childhood education system. Um, uh, but I think we have to uh, think about um, uh, where this money could be best spent. Uh, we know that the, the, the achievement gap begins uh, as a result of um, uh, kids coming in from di different economic backgrounds. The parents, educational attainment, parents, um, uh, economic condition has a huge uh, impact on where kids score on achievement results and how ready they are for school. And so uh, a good early childhood education system can help mitigate that or shrink the gap between the kids in poverty and the kids who come from affluence uh, when they first come into school. So, so that's a smart place to invest those dollars. Uh, I think we should be uh, thinking about how we better support parents parents and private providers uh, and how they get um, uh, uh, their kids ready for uh, kindergarten, for ready for school uh, as well. But this needn't be a, a, di a dichotomy of you either have uh, a state-funded early childhood uh, child care system or you support parents and private providers. We should be doing all of these things. Okay, our last question comes from Chance uh, via Twitter. And Chance asks, uh, what uh, do you plan uh, on doing to keep Iowa at the top of the nation in education? Um, well, I, I like the way, way you phrase this question, uh, Chance, Will, because you first say, what do I plan to do to keep Iowa at the top of the nation? And so I guess that's 
a question that all of us have is Iowa really at the top of the nation? Uh, in some results where we just look at uh, assessments that our uh, affluent white kids take, we do pretty well uh, on those stacked up uh, to other parts of the country. Uh, but we've got a lot more kids than that in the state and the uh, economic diversity, the racial diversity is always uh, increasing. We have a huge achievement gap in the state between uh, general education students and special education students that uh, I think is just morally reprehensible. We've got to address this. And uh, we, if we look at our national uh, assessment results uh, on uh, an indicator such as the NAEP test, uh, the National uh, uh, Report Card test, um, uh, our results look mediocre. We look like we're in the middle of the pack uh, in that. And again, it, it comes back to that issue of uh, has um, uh, uh, Iowa's achievement results uh, stagnated? Have we slowed down our progress? Are we, uh, has our tradition of great schools in Iowa really become something that's holding us back? It's, it's at the same time um, a great strength here, that tradition, and at, at the same time it's a great liability because it keeps us in many cases from doing the things that we have to do to make our schools make that transition from good to great. Um, the things that I think we have to do to improve education in Iowa relate to three main areas. We need clear outcomes and fair measures. That's kind of the first area. Uh, so what are our expectations for kids? Clearly defining those and then having measures that are aligned with that. The second major area is around educator effectiveness. So how do we improve the people working in our schools and support the people working in our schools? So there's a lot of effort that we'll put into that. And the last area uh, is around innovations that improve learning and we have to start thinking about how we introduce experimentation, new ideas, different approaches, new ways of thinking into education, all in ways that are configured toward getting good outcomes for kids is the end result. Uh, so I think if we can look at good outcomes for kids, high achievement for kids as our primary goal, and then base all decisions uh, in the education system with that in mind, we're going to come out okay.